Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Today we are going to be taking an advanced English test together. So this is a C2 advanced English test. I'm going to take it. Let's see how many you can get correct. If you don't get any correct, don't worry. This is hard. It's hard stuff. But hopefully you can learn a little bit from it. So how are we all? Hello. We've got someone from Afghanistan watching. Someone from Nepal. This is so exciting. Someone from Sudan, Belarus. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Italy. My goodness, thank you so much. While we are doing this、um, live stream, while we're doing this test, if you have any English questions, any questions about grammar, vocabulary, whatever, let me know in the chat and I will answer them. So let's get started, shall we? By the way, we are currently in the process of moving house, so we've had to do a bit of a weird setup、um, because a lot of our things aren't in this house anymore because we're moving. So it's very stressful. I'm very tired. <laughs> I've done a lot of painting and moving. Whew, it's been a lot. But let's get started straight away, shall we?、Um, oh, hello from Dublin, Ireland. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi from Prague. My goodness. So this is the test that we've got today. Can you see it? So I've got fifteen questions, and then we've got some questions where you have to put the correct verb in there. But let's start with this. So question number one. All you need to do is choose the correct option. So we've got a. I think the show is about starting now. B. I think the show is about in start now. C. I think the show is about to start now. What do you think? A, B, or C? What sounds good? What sounds the most likely to be correct? What do we think? A, B, or C? We've got lots of. C's very good, everybody. It is C. Oh, someone asked, can we download this video after? Yes, this video will be available on YouTube, so you can watch it whenever you want. Yes, it's C because about to goes with just a base verb, just the infinitive verb. So I am about to watch. She is about to see. We are about to eat. So we just need the normal verb. Here we go. Next one. So, what do we think of number two? You would have heard the news yet. You won't have heard the news yet. You will have heard the news yet. What's the correct answer? What do we think, everybody? What do we think? What could it be? Oh, oh someone said the scenery is so bad. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I'm moving house. This is as good as I can do. I'm moving house. Okay, we've got A. Someone says B. Someone else says B. Someone says A. Ooh, a bit of a mix between A and B. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. A or B? Let's see. A lot of people are saying A. A lot of people are saying A. So, it's not A. It's actually B, okay? Because we've got this word yet. Yet is the key. So we use yet when we're talking about things that started in the past or continue now in the present perfect, or for questions in the present perfect. So you might say,、um, uh, oh, and for negatives as well. Negative statements in the present perfect. So I haven't seen that film. Yet, leading up till now, or I haven't seen、uh, him yet. So negative sentences. So this is a negative. Will not. Will not. So you won't have heard the news yet up until now. We also might use yet for questions in the present perfect tense. So I might say,、um, Have you eaten yet? Or have you seen? Your friend yet? So, for questions in the present perfect or negative state- statements in the present perfect, we're using yet. So, listen, you won't have heard the news yet. You will not have heard the news yet. So, let me tell you, your dog is dead. I don't know, something like that. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Does that make sense? Someone says, okay. Interesting. Good. Okay. Fabulous. Shall someone says Nazia says I won. Well done. You won. Fantastic. Okay. What about number three? So we've got. What do you think you'll do? What do you think you'll be doing? 
What do you think you are doing 10 years from now? This is the key here, 10 years from now. Okay, that's the key. So what do we think? A, B or C? What's your vote, everybody? What's your vote, A, B or C? What do we think? Someone says B, A. What else we got? Any other? B, A, B, B. Okay, a couple of Bs and As, B. Oh, B, lots of Bs. Someone else, A? The answer is, dun, 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 dun. B. Do you know why? Do you know why it's B? It's B because you will do, so you will, base verb, so you will go, you will see, is about the immediate future. So, for example, um, if I'm talking to you about tomorrow, I might say, what do you think you'll do tomorrow? You will do tomorrow. I'm talking to you about the immediate future, tomorrow. Be doing, so be verbing, will be verbing, is about further than the immediate future. So I might say to you, um, what do you think you'll be doing next week? It's a bit more further away than immediate. So because it's 10 years from now, that's quite far away. So what do you think you'll be doing 10 years from now? What do you think you'll be doing in a year's time? It's a bit more further away. And it can't be this one because we've got are. What do you think you are doing right now? So we can say that. What do you think you are doing? But it's got to be about right now. Make sense, everybody? Make sense? Is that clear? Is that clear, everybody? Fabulous. Well done, everybody. You're doing a great job. Let's move on. Ooh, okay. So what is the right answer? We've got, that's a small Victorian round wooden table. That's a Victorian small round wooden table. That's a Victorian round wooden small table. It's tricky. It was really hard. What do we think? A, B or C? A, B or C? What do we think? What do we think? Okay, we've got a vote for B. Interesting. We've got a vote for C. We've got a vote for A. Nice and split. B, A, A, A. Oh, interesting. So we've got a bit of, got a bit of a mixture here. A bit of a mixture. Okay, so this is all about adjective order. So the order in which we put adjectives. And there is a list. There's an actual order that you can follow. So when you've got multiple adjectives, you're supposed to put them in a certain order. But that's very hard to remember. And most of the time, you are not, we wouldn't say this many adjectives. Most of the time, we wouldn't go da, 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 da. But if you need to, there's a certain order. So the order should go you only need to remember the first three. So let's just remember the first three. So the first thing you need to talk about is the number. So the number of something or the quantity of something. Then you want to talk about your opinion about it. So what's your opinion about it? Then it would be size. So we're gonna go for number, opinion, size. Everything else, you probably are not gonna get that far along, but we'll go through it. So here, it's gotta be A, because size is the first one, small. Because then the next one would be age. So it would go quantity, uh, so number or quantity, opinion, size, age, then shape, and then color. I know wooden is not really a color, but it's kind of describing how it looks. That's a lot to remember. You, you know, when you're speaking, you're not going to remember that order, really. Um, so as long as you remember, probably the most important one is opinion. Normally, opinion comes first. So if I said, oh, look at that, um, um, look at that weird little animal. Like, it's a weird little animal. It's weird. My opinion and the quality of it is that it's weird. But this is not always true. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. Sometimes the order gets a bit mushed up. So don't stress too much. Just don't do a big long list of adjectives if you can help it. Does that all make sense? That all makes sense. Hi from France. Bonjour Thierry, comment ça va? Lots, great job everybody, well done. If you've just joined us, welcome. We are taking an English test together. This is kind of C1, C2 level. So it's supposed to be hard, okay? It's not supposed to be easy. Good afternoon, Dior, how are you? Okay, what about this one? Number five, 
What do we think? I was going to call you, but then I forgot. I was thinking of call you, but then I forgot. I was calling you, but then I forgot. What do we think? A, B or C? A, B, C, it's easy. It's like counting up to three. Sing a simple melody. That's how easy love can be. A, B, C, it's easy. It's like counting up to three. You've all got it. Well done. A, yes, that's an easier one. You've all got that one. I was going to call you, but then I forgot. Sorry. Okay, number six. What do we think? Now this one again, it's important what's at the end. So we've got, at the time I got to the airport, the plane had left. In time I got to the airport, the plane had left. By the time I got to the airport, the plane had left. A, B or C? A, B, C, it's easy as one, two, three. That is a great song, everybody. That's a great song. Oh, we've got some C's, C, 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 C. Lots of C's, you've got it. Well done, it is the C because by, exaggerates a deadline. You know, if you just say at, it's a specific time. So at 10, I went to the airport, but by the time is, is more about like the time leading up to it and the deadline. So, oh, will you be finished by six? Will you be finished by the deadline of six? So it's gotta be by. Okay, number seven, bicycles are widely used in Amsterdam. Bicycles use widely in Amsterdam, or bicycles are in use widely in Amsterdam. A, B or C, what do we think? A, B or C. Someone says about the last question, I hope that that will never happen to me, my nightmare. And I think that's someone talking about missing their flight. I've never done that, but I think that would, that I would hate that. My friend went to the airport and she was ready to go away. She had an event in Germany and she gave her passport and they said, you can't travel because your passport expires in three months time. So you can't travel. Imagine that, you plan your whole trip, you're ready to go, you've packed your bags, and then they say you can't go. Awful, terrible. Yes, what's everyone saying? So some Bs, some As, some Cs. So it's actually A. They are, you, they are widely used, they are widely used. We wouldn't use just use on its own, it's got to be used. Um, and in use is a bit more formal. So in use is more about like you've got a machine or something or um, a toilet, you know, it's a bit more, oh, there's someone in there, it's in use right now, it's, it's in use so you can't use it. So you might say, oh, the shower is in use, someone's using it, you, you can't go in there. Um, but that's a bit more about one specific thing that's being used. But we are talking about all the time. Bicycles are widely used in Amsterdam. What about eight? The children were looking after by my mother. The children looked after by my mother. The children were being looked after by my mother. What do we think, everybody? Oh yeah, make sure if you've got any questions about English, we have the chat right here. So feel free to uh, send any English questions. Multi says, I have an English exam tomorrow. This is great practice for you. Good luck, I'm sure you'll be fine. What are people saying? We've got Vivian says C, Dior says C, Lauren says B, Tanya says C. Or, okay, a couple of C's. A lot of people going for C. You are correct. Well done, everybody. You're doing really, really well. It is C. So it's the passive voice. They were being looked after by my mother. The children weren't looking after, if you took away the by of A, if you took this away, that could work. You could say the children were looking after my mother, but that would be a bit weird unless you've got a really, really old ill mother and the children are really mature. That would be strange. But the passive voice, the children were being looked after by my mother. What about this one? I've just been done at the hairdressers. I've just cut my hair at the hairdressers. I've just been to the hairdressers. What do you think? Well, what do you think? That's the end of the question. Someone says, What's going on? Kazakhstan online. Welcome. We are doing an English test. This is an advanced English test and we are taking it together. So see how many you can get right. Oh, great. We've got someone says A, someone says B, someone says C. Another person says A. Lots of mixed responses here. Some more A, some more Bs. This one's quite mixed. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Oh, interesting. Lots of mixed ones here. Very, very mixed. So, is it B? I've just cut my hair at the hairdressers. Is it A? I've just been done at the hairdressers. Is it C? 
The answer is C. Because if you go to the hairdressers, you are not cutting your hair. You are not cutting your hair. If you go to the hairdressers, you don't cut your own hair, do you? You can say, I've had my hair cut. I've had my hair cut. It happened to me. Or I got my hair cut. So I've had my hair cut or I got my hair cut. It happened to me. But you didn't cut your hair. So it can't be B. A, in the UK, we have a phrase, I've been done. <laughs> we have that phrase, but it's slang. It's colloquial. It means you've been robbed or scammed or someone has tried to take more money from you. So if I said to you, I've just been done at the hairdressers, that means that they took my money and they didn't do my hair. So technically A could work, but it's definitely C. I've just been to the hairdressers. What do you think? Okay, what about number 10? Sarah got her handbag snatched. Sarah had her handbag snatched. Sarah's handbag had snatched. Snatch is this, is this action of taking. So she had her bag doo -doo 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 -doo, and someone took it. So what do we think? What's the correct answer of number 10? What do we think? Someone says A, someone says B, someone says A. Interesting, B. Oh, now this is a really interesting answer. You're gonna love this answer. This is really interesting. New people, if you've just joined us, we are taking an English test together. So see how many you can get right. Oh, what I've got A, B, B, A. So no one's thinking C, I don't think. People are going for A and B. Ah, oh, so Dior says A and B are correct. So let me talk to you about it. Grammatically, both of these could be right, A and B, grammatically. However, the meaning is slightly different. So let's go back to what I was telling you about the hairdressers. Do you remember I said, I got my hair cut? I got my hair cut. We use got for things that are a choice that I want to do. So I got my hair cut. I got my car cleaned. Um, I need to get my house painted. I need to get my shirt fixed. These are things that I'm choosing to do. I want someone to do a service for me. I'm not gonna choose for somebody to snatch my handbag unless I, for some reason, I paid a man to come and take my handbag from me. That would be a really weird thing to do. So <laughs> that, that wouldn't happen. But having your handbag snatched, it's, it doesn't necessarily need to be a choice or something that you've chosen to do. It just happened to me. I have my bag taken. I had my car, um, I had my car scratched. You know, some people scratch your car. Um, oh, I had my keys stolen. It, it's something that just happens to you. It's not necessarily a choice. So this would be B, congratulations if you got it right. Somebody asked an interesting question. So somebody said, I'll come back to live scene, hello. Somebody said, why do I understand your words? But when I watch an English movie, I don't understand anything. That's a really good question. It's because when I'm talking, I really want you to understand me. I'm talking so that you understand me. And I know my audience. I know people listening are learning English. So I'm speaking much more clearly. When you watch a movie, the actor only wants the person that they are talking to to understand them. So if you've got a conversation between two people in a movie, they're just talking to someone else and that person speaks English. So they don't need to be super, super clear. So you need to have listening practice. I mean, my videos are great, but if you go on our channel and we've got videos of me and Bez just talking to each other, those are really useful because we're not talking to be understood by English learners. We're talking to someone else who speaks English. So we talk a lot more quickly. Blah, 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 blah. That's the best way to, to practice that. Um, hello, everybody. Hello. Should we go on to the next question, everybody? Let's do it. Let's do it. So our next question is, if I had known you were coming, I have bought a cake. I would have bought a cake. I will buy a cake. What do we think? There's actually a song. If I knew you were coming. Mm, 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 mm. I can't sing the next part because it's the answer. Uh, what do we think? B, B, B. 
B, 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 B. Lots of Bs, isn't it? Lots of Bs. It is B. It's B. Would have. I would have is almost like, oh, I, I would have done that. It's like um, thinking of an alternative reality. If you would have known another thing, you would have done this thing. But the past has finished now. You can't change it. You are just expressing an alternative reality in the past. So you might say, um, uh, oh, if I had been invited to the party, I would have gone, but I, but I wasn't invited to the party, so I couldn't. You know, it's, I'm talking about these alternative um, outcomes in the past if something else was different. Hello, someone sent me a cute little wave emoji with pink hands. That's very fun. <laughs> okay, next one. What do we got? 12. That letter should have arrived by now. That letter should to have arrived by now. That letter must be arrived by now. A, B or C. A, B, C. A, B or C. What do you think? We've only got like three more questions of these, so you're doing really, really well. A. Someone says C. Another person says A. Another person says C. Uh, 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 uh. Hmm. Well done to the people who said... Hey, it should have arrived by now. It should have. That's what's supposed to happen. I want you to think about the word should with um, the way that life is supposed to be. You know, you should wear a coat when it rains. You don't have to, but that's the way life is supposed to be. You know, when it rains, you wear a coat. Um, that letter should have arrived by now. That's the way life works because I sent my letter and it should have. I'm annoyed if it doesn't do it. So should is about how life is supposed to be, really. It's, it's what's best. So you should do your work. You should work hard. You should eat healthy. That's the, you know, the best way life is supposed to be. Must. It would work, maybe. But it would have to be have. Must have arrived. Must have. And I might use must if I want to really emphasize that I can't believe the, the letter is not there. I can't believe it. It must have arrived by now. It must have. It's, it's unbelievable to me that it hasn't. It's not correct because you have no way of guaranteeing, but it's just you want to emphasize. You're being dramatic. OK, what about number 13? I think you might have told me. I think you might tell me. I think you might to have told me. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? A, B, or C, A. Um, A's, lots of A's. Someone's from India here. Hello from India. Thanks for watching. And got a B in there. What do you think? What do you think? Yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're very close to 400,000 subscribers. If you're learning English, subscribe today. Make that your promise to yourself that you're going to watch these videos and practice your English. Well done to the people who said A. It is correct. It is A. Um, I mean, B could be correct in some context. You might say, hey, I think you might tell me your secret. Maybe, but it's much more uh, likely that you would say, I think you might have told me. OK. Ooh, tricky one. 14. At any time was I informed. At no time was I informed. At no time was informed I. This is all a bit of inversion for you. A bit of the sentences going a bit crazy. So another way we could say this is we could say I wasn't informed at any time. That would be it straight through. I wasn't informed at any time. But what we're doing here is we're inverting it. So we're making it backwards. So all we're saying is I wasn't informed at any time. I wasn't told at any time. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Tricky one. B. Got a couple of Bs. Got a couple of As. Got a couple of A's and B's. OK, so no one thinks it's C, which is good. It's not C because ending a sentence with I is very uh, Shakespearean, you know, um, uh, um, uh, long. I can't even think of a sentence with I at the end. Not modern. So it is B. At no time was I informed. At no time was I informed. You can't say at 
any time because you're talking about multiple times. Any time. You're saying at no time was I informed. No time. I, I, th there's no time that I was informed. At no time was I informed that this was going to happen. How dare you? Last question. How? Here we go. It's just not worth to get involved. It's just not worth getting involved. It's just not worth to invo involve myself. It's just not worth to involve myself. What do we think? This is your last question in this format and then we've got a slightly different format for the next couple of questions. What do we think? C. Someone says C. A. B. Oh, I like the ones where it's nice and mixed. That's good. I like ones where people have different... Oh, I've got very different ideas. A, B and C. That's exciting. I love when there's different ones. Okay. <gasps> what do we think? Okay, so the actual answer is... <gasps> B. When we say about worth, it's not worth... The verb is in the ing form. So it's not worth getting upset. It's not worth being there. It's not worth buying that. It's not worth seeing it. It's not worth doing. Ing, ing, ing. It's not worth goes with ing or it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't worry about it. But if it's a verb, it's going to be ing. Well done. Did anyone get 15 out of 15? If you got 15 out of 15, tell me. Uh, you can either tell me in the chat now or if you're watching this on YouTube later on, tell me in the comments. Amazing. <coughs> oh, I just choked on air. If, um, let's just do the next couple of questions. So we've got a slightly different format here. So let's just do these. Before we do that though, let's have a little look at what people did. Miriam got 15 out of 15. Well done. Uh, someone else got 15. Um, fantastic. Well done. Well done. And like I say, you know, there's so many different tests online. It's really hard to get the perfect level for everybody watching. This might have been quite easy for you. It might have been really hard for you. Um, but either or, I hope you learned something from there. Can you make a video on how to improve your pronunciation? I have made lots of videos on how to improve my, your pronunciation. If you go on our YouTube channel, if you go on playlists, if you type in, if, if you go on the pronunciation or accent playlist, there's lots, there's lots. Some have got 10, amazing. Some have got 13, amazing. That's so good, so good. So let's just do the last part of this quiz. Here we go. So this one is slightly different. We have to put the right verbs in the thing. So first one, we've got, let me see if I can make, make sure you can see everything. Mm, I might need to zoom out a little bit. Can you see all of the options there? There we go, that'll do. So number one, to mm, a party. What do you think? What's the right verb from these options here? It's only gonna be one of these. What do you think? To mm, a party. What option have we got? What do you think? A couple of people are saying it. It's throw. Well done. We say to throw a party. I don't know why. Let's throw a party. Let's, let's, let's have, we don't say to make a party. A lot of my students say to make a party. We don't say that. We say to throw a party. Great job. To mm, one's suffering. Ooh, to mm, one's suffering. This is a tough one. What do you think? To acquire one suffering, to alleviate, to bear, to take? What do we think goes in that gap? What do we think? Just a, a lot of people saying it. Alleviate. Well done. Alleviate. Alleviate means to, to ease, to make less. If you alleviate, it's like you make it easier for somebody. So you could say... Um, I bought her a cake to alleviate her suffering because she was so sad, just to make her suffering a bit, a bit less, just to lessen it, if I can. To mm time, to mm time. What goes in number three? To mm time. Someone said serve. You could say to serve time if you're talking about prison. You could say that. To take 
time, well done. It's just gonna, it's going to take time. This thing is going to take some time. It's going to take some time, lovely. And it means just to, that's just, it talks how long it will take. So it will take time, it will take, usually when we say it will take time, it means a long amount of time. What about number four, a grudge to mm, a grudge. Do you know what a grudge is? Are we aware with what a grudge means? A grudge, it's a noun, a grudge is a a bad feeling towards somebody and you you keep it for a long time and you you every time you look at that person you're oof, and you just keep these bad feelings towards them so you always treat them differently you 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 don't forgive them so you might say um you know try not to mm, a grudge just forgive them you know it's not good to mm, a grudge and we say to bear a grudge we bear a grudge or hold a grudge so you might say to them don't bear a grudge don't hold a grudge you know just forgive them it's not nice to to bear a grudge it, it makes you sad okay what about a hard bargain a hard bargain this is kind of an idiom have you heard of this idiom to mm, a hard bargain to mm, a hard bargain. Do we have any ideas? Is it to acquire a hard bargain? To read a hard bargain? To serve a hard bargain? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Someone said it already. Well done. Someone said it. To drive a hard bargain bargain. You normally say this when you're talking to a salesperson. So if someone is trying to sell you something um, and if they are really trying to, you know, lower the cost, you'd say, oh, you drive a hard bargain. Like that's a, that's, that's a lot of money, but it's a good deal. I don't know. Oh, it's tricky. It's kind of like a phrase you would use when you're negotiating with somebody. It's kind of a jokey term, like, oh, you'd, you drive a hard bargain, that's that's a tough price, but it's a good one. I'm thinking about it. That's a, that's a good price. You drive a hard bargain. Number six, to mm heart. Can you see all the options? No, you can't. To mm heart. So we've got to follow heart, to acquire heart, to serve heart, to cook heart. I'm just thinking about what this would be. Hold on a second. Heart. Hmm. Uh, I don't know about this one, guys. Let's skip this one because none of those words are jumping out to me as an English teacher. I, even I am not sure. Can anyone help me? To follow. We wouldn't really say to follow. You might say to follow one's heart or to follow your heart but I don't know if we would just say to follow heart that doesn't really work um oh interesting interesting maybe we need to swap maybe you're right oh can I not take it back so someone has said maybe it's to take heart to take heart, to to um, feel something emotionally. But we've put take on take time, guys. Ah, oh, we've messed it up. Maybe that one is to serve time. Maybe that one's to serve time. And then that one is to take heart. Oh, man. But I don't think we can change it. Disaster, everybody. Disaster. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. <laughs> we'll try our best. So we've got... Oh, can you do multiple? Maybe... You... Oh, no, you can't. So we've got... Number seven, to mm, suit, to mm, suit. What do we think? What could go in there? To mm, suit, to mm, suit, to follow suit. Well done, yes. To follow suit, it just means to copy, to do the same thing. So I, uh, you leave at 10 and I will follow suit. I'll do the same thing. I will follow after you. It's just, you don't really need to say suit. It just means to do the same thing afterwards. To follow suit. Okay. Number eight, to mm, music. To mm, music. To acquire music. To cook music. To cut music. 
to serve music, to read music, or to collect music? What do we think? May, um, yeah, people are coming up with some new, gonna come, come up with some new uh, ideas. It's actually to read music, which sounds weird. That does sound weird. So when we read music, we are talking about the people who get the paper with the dots on it and they can follow it. So you can say, I, I read music. Yeah, give me, give me the music and I can put it in front of the piano and I can, whoa, and my light just flashed and went off. Um, and you can read the music. So we say reading music. To mm, a tooth. To mm, a tooth. What do you think? What goes in there? To acquire a tooth? To cook a tooth? To cut a tooth, to serve a tooth, or to collect a tooth. Someone says to pull, to, to cut. It is to cut a tooth, and I believe only a dentist should do that if they're cutting. Oh, I can't even think about it. Something about dentistry and the dentist ooh, makes me feel really weird. So yeah, the dentist might cut your tooth. Gross, gross. Okay, number 10, can you see number 10? Um, yes, you can. So to mm, one's thoughts, to mm, one's thoughts. I just need to mm, my thoughts. I just need to mm, my thoughts. What do you think goes in there? To collect your thoughts just need to collect my thoughts. It's, it's when you just sit and you really think about things and you bring everything together. Let me just collect my thoughts because I'm a little bit, I'm a bit stressed. I've got a lot to think about. So let me just collect my thoughts. Let me just get back to being calm and sane. And I know what I'm doing and I understand what I need to do next. I need to collect my thoughts. If you're um, looking at this, by the way, and if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so bad at English. I don't know any of these things. Don't worry. These are idioms. They are phrases. They are very colloquial. Don't worry. This is all about learning them. So if you don't know them, don't worry. We're going to learn them together. Then we've got number 11, to mm a taste. Now, the only options we have left, I'll tell you, we've got acquire, cook, and serve. We've got acquire, cook, and serve. So what do you think goes in there? To acquire a taste, to cook a taste, or to serve a taste? What do you think? To cook a taste? Mm. It's actually acquire. To acquire a taste. Have you ever heard about um, when someone says, oh, it's an acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. It means a taste that you're not born with. So babies, kids, they probably like French fries. Probably. They're probably born with a taste and they like to taste salty, sugary things. Um, they're not, it's not too hard to like. When you get older, you might acquire, you might get, acquire just means get, like I acquired a house, I got a house. Um, so it means you develop the taste as you get older. So if someone says snails are an acquired taste, it means you have to learn to like them. You have to develop the taste. You have to be a bit more mature. Not everybody likes them. It's not like French fries or burgers that everybody likes. It's a bit more acquired. Now, I just realized actually serve is not an option anymore because remember we decided that this was going to be to take heart and this one is to serve time. We got a bit mixed up there. So the only option left for the last one is to cook the books, which everyone's going to go, huh? What do you mean to cook the books? What on earth does that mean? To cook the books. Does anyone know what cook the books means? Does anyone know what cook the books means? Does anyone know that? This is a really advanced phrase. If you know this one, your English is, is good. 
you do. I mean, even if you don't know it, your English is good because this is a really tricky phrase. Does anybody know what cook the books means? Cooking the books is not being very honest with your taxes, with your accounts. Your books, your books are your accounts. So if you run a business, if you um, bring in money in your business, you have to write it down, don't you? You have to say, oh, I made $50,000 this year and this is where the money came from because then you have to pay tax on it. If you cook the books, you are maybe not writing everything down or you are maybe writing different numbers down that you shouldn't be so that you have to um you have to pay less tax so yeah you're right if an accountant was cooking books terrible terrible so don't cook your books um but it's quite um it's quite an old-fashioned phrase but it is still a phrase that you might hear i believe it's in do you know the musical les miserables the one, um, I dreamed a dream and time gone by. There's a song in there and he says that. He goes, master of the house, da, 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 um, cooking the books. I don't know, but he does do that phrase in Les Miserables. Um, someone says, cook the book. I'm baffled at this moment. I know it's a really weird, um, it's a really weird phrase, but it's a fun one. Um, so how was that for everybody? That last part of the test was tricky. I know it was, but don't worry. Try to learn them. These are nice little phrases that you can have. Um, we've got, let's go through them again. So we've got to throw a party, to alleviate one's suffering, to serve time or take time. It could be either to bear a grudge, to drive a hard bargain, to take heart, to follow suit, to read music, to cut a tooth, to collect one's thoughts, to acquire a taste, to cook the books. So you've got lovely, nice new phrases there that you can learn. Now, <laughs> someone says, sorry, but it is to cook a taste and to acquire the books. Unfortunately, it's not. We can't cook a taste. Yeah, a taste is the, the feeling you have in your mouth. You can't cook that. You can't, you're not cooking the taste, you are cooking the food. So that is how it is. Well done, everybody. You just did an advanced English test. If you did really well, great. If you didn't do so well, take this as your motivation and hopefully you learnt these things. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, does anyone have any questions before we go? We've got someone from Taiwan here. Wow. Hello, Umesh. Hello, guitar music. Woohoo! Um, who else have we got? Emily says, I'm too late. Don't worry about it. In about 20 minutes, this YouTube video, this live lesson will be a YouTube video. So you can watch the whole thing again. It will be on YouTube. Don't worry. Um, hello, Sammy. Hello. Dior, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Miriam, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I'm glad it was useful for you. Um, I am... Like I said, we're about to move house, so we're going to keep trying to give you as many YouTube videos as possible, but be patient with us because it's a stressful time right now. And if you can, share any of our YouTube videos on your Instagram or your social media. Feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps us out. It means that we can keep giving you more stuff. The more you like and subscribe and all that, the more we can teach you. Uh, if you're late, don't worry, you can watch this again. Um, any tips for your English exam? If your English exam is tomorrow, like you said it is, you will not in one day significantly improve your English level. So don't worry about learning more. Just revise the stuff that you've got. Maybe just focus on those things that are always difficult for you, those things that you always struggle with and try to think of some little rhymes or images that you can remember to remember those things, anything you can do. But don't worry too much because you won't get loads better in one day. You, you can just work on remembering the things that you always struggle with. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Um, someone said, oh, can I have a link to the test? Sure. If you want this test, it is here. So it's the, it's on English tag. 
It's called English Tag Level Test Upper Advanced C2. So if you go on Google and type in English Tag Level Test Upper Advanced C2, I'm sure you will find it. Well done, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday. Well done, well done. And I shall see you next time. Well